In RimWorld, we've nuked planets, mutated planets, milked planets, but never have we saved planets. I mean, sure, we've tried to be charitable amid super soldiers and laser eyes, but this is 2022. New year, new me. No more vampire slavery, no more war crimes, and no more genetic aberrations. Now is the time for cold, hard, naked tree women and two drug-loving hippie friends. This time around, we're the Laraxian Commune. We love trees, all trees, and all things tree-related. Dryads, leaves, wood. And on this war-torn world where everybody hates everybody else, we're gonna be the moral arbiters, the ones bringing peace through diplomacy and kindness, and we will never raise a weapon to our fellow man, or tree, tree people. But you're thinking, how could you possibly stand up to cataphracts, mechanoids, and but naked tribal raiders. Well, my friends, we protect the trees, and the trees, the trees protect me. Me's. <laughs> the trees protect us. With our dryad supremacy meme, plus a slew of mods that bring perfect unisons to the dryads themselves, side casting and pruning. We're gonna bring world peace without our colonists ever spilling a single drop of blood. And of course, as always, if you would like to play along with the Adventures of Dice, Petal, and Milky, not only will the full mod pack be available in the description, but I'll also make the save available so you can dive in at exactly the same moment I am right now. So without further ado, let's kick things off. And I'll explain the character backstories, traits, skills, and the world itself, and go into a bit more detail with the ideology as we go ahead here. And as I try and figure out how on earth we're going to build a base when we are <laughs> surrounded by trees. Trees which our people aren't going to be too pleased if we chop down en masse. Uh, wow, look at the map itself though, huh? This is a weird one. It's like this huge mountain face at the bottom with this road cutting through. That's quite cool. We're going to have to go big agriculture this time because we do have the vegan meme. That means we can only stick to... Uh, Stick to farms, so no ranching, no animal hunting, no fishing. I'll kick things off by going for this fertile ground, otherwise we're, <laughs> we're going to be in a lot of trouble. Somewhere we should have some meals, if I can see them. Here we go. So we've got 50 vegetarian fine meals, which we need to find somewhere to put very, very fast. And the only other thing we've got to kick things off are three untrained, unshackled dryads. Just regular plain old dryads that hang around whether or not you've got a granlin tree. We're going to have to be so careful because even cutting down so much as a single tree is going to, it's going to ruin their day. Okay, I think that should be more or less safe to start putting down a farm. And we just have to spend one or two days after that replanting every single one of these goddamn trees. Okay, carefully plan out farm areas. And let's just go for something really standard for the timing. Let's just go all in on the rice. Okay, I guess that'll do for the timing. This is already doing me a significant frighten. But to be fair, I did design the entire mod pack with a pretty unique play style in mind. So we do have five total memes. Three of those five are the highest impact and then the other two are the medium impact ones. So we've got high life, nudism, tree connection, vegan, and dryad supremacy. High life means that we need all the drugs we can possibly grow. And I thought that fit in quite nicely to our agrarian society we've got going on here. And on the topic of party lifestyle, we've got nudism. At most, we're only allowed pants, but fully nude is, of course, far more preferable. Then we have tree connection that not only makes it so that we have to be very careful about chopping down trees where we build our bases, how we build our bases, but when we don't have any access to wood whatsoever. But it also gives us that strong Garanlan connection, or as it's called this time around, the Anima Nexus connection, because we're using the uh, Anima style. So vegan, of course, means on the surface we can't eat any meat. We get high farming yield to make up for that, but we also can't use leather for any apparel. We can still use it for kind of constructing doormats and weird miscellaneous stuff like that. We also can't slaughter animals at all. And then finally, and arguably the most important of all, is dryad supremacy. Now, you can only choose this if you take tree connection. That gives us three unshackled dryads to kick things off, but it enhances the abilities of all dryads. Our claws are going to hit harder. Our bark skin dryads are going to be able to soak up more shots. They're the things that are going to keep us alive. And I thought it'd be kind of fun to house rule it and say that every colonist needs to have an active Granlin connection. I've built one thing and apparently we've already chopped down a tree. Oh, damn it. Minus 10 right off the bat. Brilliant. Oh, that's interesting. So because we have no imprisoned animals with pen markers, they're happy about that. And whenever we sow human food, they're happy about that one too. No tree. I haven't been around any trees in a while. Milky... You good? And I mean, while we're having a look at our people, we might as well introduce them properly, right? So our colony leader, our main character, arguably, this time around is Petal 
bud. Now, Petzl herself is a dryad. You could say she's a dry queen or something like that if you want to head cannon it. She's one of the Warhammer Fantasy dryads that got a really cool retexture to make it look a little bit more Rimworld recently. And I thought for a kind of leading character in a colony full of people worshipping trees, that'd be kind of perfect. Psychically hypersensitive, animal lover, beautiful, and in harmony with nature, with big plants and animal skill. We then have Milky Truckles. <laughs> <laughs> Milky Truckles being our expert but somewhat eccentric cook. And then finally, none other than Dice Breeze herself. Fun loving and ecologist by trade. Very good at plants and animals, but real strength is in medical and intellectual there. Pretty much as modest as a start as you can get. We don't have a dedicated combat character or builder or miner. Just people living out here in nature. Okay, but yeah, shit, we do need to hurry up. Second, these raids turn up, we're done for at this rate. I guess we'll just start even more carefully this time, removing some trees. What are we going to build with? Um, I mean, eventually, though, we'll be able to get Woodmaker Dryad, so that would solve the problem. But for the time being, we are genuinely just going to have to take the hit, aren't we? At least until we can build a stone cutting table. Oh, God. I've made a horrible mistake. <laughs> <laughs> so this is all about trying to survive without abusing nature, right? We've got to worry about more extreme climate cycles, things getting hotter and colder far more than they normally would. We've got raiders that we realistically can't defend ourselves from yet. Nature itself is meant to be unstoppable, so machines and things like that are going to break down so frequently compared to how they normally would thanks to Fluffy's breakdowns. Bigger problem, and a little bit more immediate problem, uh, we, we, need, a, we need a bathroom? We need, a, we need something. Dig a hole in the floor? Is that an option? And to be honest, I thought the hygiene mob was a perfect fit this time around. I like it anyway. I think it adds a nice little depth and a little bit extra to the base design. But there are so many cool submods for it that are based on kind of green energy, green living. Ways to collect water from the atmosphere, that type of thing. Well, the one thing I have realized more and more as we play is there's absolutely no water on this fucking map. <laughs> Gonna have to start wringing out the moss on those rock chunks soon. Hey, there's a crow on my farm. Piss off, crow. What am I supposed to do with it? We're vegan. Do vegans build scarecrows? Hey, there's another crow in my meals. If this was any other room or playthrough, I'd go over and kick it, but it's illegal. <laughs> okay, finally finished replanting all of those trees, just in time to go and dig up a bunch of other trees. Oh, no, I can't dig that one up. There's a ginkgo tree. Does that count as a tree or just a plant, though? Uh, well, we don't have a choice, I'm afraid. Petal, I'm so sorry. Is she okay with that? That just counted as a... Oh, no! This is just absolutely horrible. Give it a week and they're all going to be breaking down. I love you, little dryads. At least there's something positive in this whole thing. Can they at least do something helpful? Uh, no. They can guard or they can attack. Suppose we'll very carefully... No, not like that we won't. Like I was saying, we're going to very carefully plant some... Oh, good lord. Very carefully plant some bamboo. Very carefully. That'll, that'll probably do it. And then maybe, dare I say it, by the end of today... We might have built a whole shed. Pure, unbridled, vegan luxury. Did I miss another tree? Am I, am I a fool? Don't answer that. Ravenously hungry. Yes, I'm well aware. Cut tree. Cut tree. T tree fell times two. Oh, damn it. More urgently, though, beyond the toilet, the bathroom, the shed, whatever we've got going on here, we do need water because there aren't any bloody ponds. I was quite all right with them drinking stagnant water for a while, but I guess we'll actually dig a well now that we've got the wood for it. <laughs> <laughs> See every cloud. We knocked down a couple of trees, but on the plus side, nobody's going to die of thirst. Oh, and they've got enough for a latrine. Fantastic. I'm going to put that facing the well. In the past quadrant, we have destroyed a lot of trees, and we shouldn't have. I don't think this was necessary. I, I agree. I agree. I'm a fool. I'm absolutely a fool. And I sure hope they don't cry when I get them to chop down the bamboo, given that they, given that they basically produce wood for the forbidden bamboo fields oh my god the meals we have enough to build a, a door because if we're gonna have to build a door we could hollow out the mountain a little bit i suppose no we really don't i'm gonna commit to it right now i will never chop down a tree i will never designate a tree to be chopped down i will never do it on purpose only out of pure ignorance and i mean that's certainly nothing new to the channel is it <laughs> oh is it that time already comment section i leave it in your very capable hands i need a name for the settlement and a name for the faction for the time being i think that'll That'll probably do it. Ooh, a crop sprout. I don't think I've ever been excited for those before in RimWorld. What is it? Agave? That's fantastic. Even more so when you realize my meals are all about to be consigned to the void. You need food? You don't need food. You need food? Just eat now. Just eat now. I'm well aware you're not that hungry. Just just eat it before they... Damn it. On the plus side, though, it does look as if there's a lot to eat around here. Kale. Kale is fine. Nettles, maybe not so much. Turmeric. Okay. Garlic. Ginseng. What the hell are we supposed to do with these? Just eat an entire clove of garlic. Eat the granlin. I'm sorry, Pierre. Your time is up, my friend. Ah, right. See, now that's a problem. 
That is, uh, that is a real genuine problem right there. Stop smiling. It's not that our people are incapable of violence, it's that they find violence abhorrent and it'll upset them for days. That combined with the fact that we've cut down trees, they're probably not gonna be too happy. Then the fact that they're freaking crows eating all my, all my crops. What do we do? Do you think, do you think we could train the, <laughs> do you think we could train the dryads that fast? We're not just gonna sit there and let them beat us. Okay, I, I mean, violence is abhorrent, but we haven't got a choice. Please. Please, we don't want to do this. Jimmy! Get him, Jimmy! Jimmy! Oh, God. Let me guess, you're upset about that one, too? Trail Turtle, I'm so sorry, my friend. Are they are they upset about that? They seem okay. I'm so sorry, Trail. Please forgive me. The best part is we are genuinely going to have to leave him on the floor because we can't build a prison. <laughs> so Trail is from the Bigly Kinship. Follower of the Necro Enthusiasts. And now that I think about it, this is probably a great time to take a look around the planet and see what we're up against. Uh, up against Diplomatical, of course. We're not going to fight any of these people. And by we're not going to fight any of these people, I mean we're not going to go out there raiding. We can fight them. Our Granlin are going to rip them to shreds, but we're not going to swing a punch. So at the very south of the map, we have the Nudist Pact there, followed by the Commonwealth of Jilp and then Discordia. Slightly down the road for our own faction, we've got the Marooned Warriors and then the Warriors of Angry on the west side. Up from them is the Bigly Kinship, and at the very top of the map, the Tree Minders. And as I said, every single one of these factions are hostile or at war to some degree with one another. And it's our job to get out there and try and bring peace. There's, there's quite a lot of events in a couple of mods that we've got that will allow us to do that. And that's going to be our win condition this time around. Bring peace and harmony to this entire planet. And try and not get horribly murdered by cataphracts. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> oh, hey, there we go. An anima pod has sprouted nearby. So to reiterate, we've got the anima theme going here that turns granlin trees into anima nexus, granlin pods into anima pods. It's just kind of nice because it ties it all together because we've got a few mods that help out with the anima trees, anima grass, that type of thing too. So it makes it all nice and cohesive. Let's get it harvested though. It's only a cosmetic change. Functionally, they are identical to your regular granlin tree. It's just the actual dryads themselves are going to be a lot stronger because of our meme probably not strong enough but <laughs> we'll worry about that later one anima seed huh plant anima nexus tree wow so we'll just kind of drop it right there bear in mind as regular granite tree would that'll also spread the moss so we do want to leave it a little bit of area to to kind of expand around let's get on with that right away as soon as we get that planted we probably want to kick things off with the the seed maker dryads as well. Get all three of our people connected to the trees. Just spend all day pruning them, whether we want wood or medicine or ideally some combat dryads. We're going to be set in basically no time at all. Oh, quest available, the ambush knight. Okay, a knight of the Commonwealth of Jilp is running from a man hunting snow hair. We hate violence. But I could make an exception. This is really interesting because it makes me think is it ever going to be possible for us to have. The throne room requirements. If we're kind of shunning machinery, we can still use machinery and that type of thing. But it's going to be kind of limited in how much we can keep maintained at all times. Can we get all of the items we'll need, the fine tiles, that type of thing, to be able to get the ranks? I mean, either way, it's quite a nice way to ally with the Commonwealth. We want to ally with everybody, like I said. Bit weird. And I suppose it does also give silent levels. The higher our silent, the faster we can prune the Garanlan tree, or as they are now, the Anima Nexus. I'll take it. Oh my god, what a hat. Oh, he's already here helping out. No, 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 run, you idiot. Oh, actually, the best part is we could just get this guy to kick the hair. We don't need to do it. What a showdown. What a showdown that we can't see because that frigging tree is in the way. I mean, that lovely, majestic tree. <laughs> just have to, have to imagine all the action that was going on back there. Are they going to be sad that we killed an animal now? No, they're fine because I guess they didn't actually do the killing. Wow, well, thank you for visiting. That was, uh, that was entertaining. I really like the bit where we got to look at some leaves. And off he goes. Hey, there we are. Oh, and that must be our Anima Nexus right there then. Fantastic. So let's begin the tree connection ritual to Petal. I think Petal is the is definitely the, the first one we should be going for here. Oh, no one else turned up, but that's all right. Anima Nexus tree connection. Nice. So that is 0 0.6 hours per day to maintain, but given every single colonist is going to have to do that, and not to mention that Petal is... I mean, she's part tree herself, 15.39 plant skill too. For our regular people, it'll probably take a lot longer, but it's still something we'll have to do here. Let's go ahead and immediately go for the seed makers then. 
Now, not only do we have mods that make the connection time a little bit faster so that we're not spending all day every day pruning the bloody things, dryads also spawn a little faster too, given that they're our only weapon against everybody. It'd be kind of a pain in the ass if we get a raid that kills all of our dryads, then we gotta wait another five days to get even one of the dryads back. Oh, anima muffalo. These muffalos have mutated for an unknown reason. Hello. The only problem is I think our people get upset if we pen animals in. So we might not even be able to keep the anima muffalo, but you know what? I'll try it anyway. I also told them to harvest every plant on the map that wouldn't upset them, which was uh, probably a mistake in hindsight. My God. <laughs> oh, well, that works pretty well. The anima muffalo apparently don't need a pen. And I mean, given that we can't use leather either, a wool growing animal seems seems pretty great. Okay, we have a, a very, very slight major problem. Everything I planned out in this mod pack is, is moot now because I've done a pretty sizable fucky wucky. Uh, Petal the Dryad. Well, turns out Petal the Dryad can actually, um, only eat meat. I mean, it's fine so far. She subsided on a diet of exclusively hairs that we've kicked to death. And in the long term, we'll be okay because we have, we have lentils. I mean, obviously, it, it makes sense that the tree, the tree can't be vegan. That, that is more or less just cannibalism, right? Petal and Pierre have formed a bond. Pierre. And we've got our second seed maker dryad going. I think you need three, right? If I remember correctly. And then they... Yeah, there you go. To do this, three seed maker dryads must slowly merge, and then we'll get our second tree. And then finally, milky truckles and dice breeze can do something useful. You two all right? I feel like I'm interrupting something. Oh, the big league kinship again. Have we at least trained a dryad in attack? We have. Okay, all three of our unshackled dryads are ready for combat. What does that give them? A little bit more moving? Blunt and sharp armor? Dodge chance? Okay, they should be good. Jimmy's on it. What'd you... Jimmy killed them and I couldn't even see because that big fat muffalo was on him. Jimmy, you annihilated that man. Holy crap. What the fuck? <laughs> the muffalo sat on him while Jimmy beat the crap out of him. That was incredible. What a dream team. The Crusher. Yeah. These freaking crows. I, I can't stop them. We could tame them. I, I get them to peck our enemy's eyes out. That doesn't seem very vegan. <laughs> And our people aren't upset about that either, are they? No, they they are pretty happy about that one. Oh no, Petzl is malnourished. I mean, I mean it's not cannibalism though, right? She's a tree. He's just a a regular guy. Is she actually legitimately all right with that? Hey, alien meat. It's minus twenty, but she's not that upset. Wow, she just ate his head clean off, and it's only minus twenty. Yeah, no, that's that's absolutely fine. Again, very arguably not vegan there. <laughs> <laughs> and then the boar finished it off. Brilliant. Now we don't have to bury anyone. Dryad's one of five. Ah, oh, that's the anima pod. It was me looking for the regular Garanlan pod like a moron. Okay, second anima tree time. I guess we'll put it decently close to the first one. Little dice is already on it. Well, dice, I guess that tree is yours, my friend. Okay, I'm a little bit more confident for the next raid that turns up now. Nice. Okay, and then let's immediately flip that one over to... Uh, I guess Clora triads. And then we go maximum connection strength. That's going to take her 1.3 hours per day. Which again is still very good, but she does have 15 plant skill. So for the average colonist, you're still looking at about 3 hours per day pruning, which actually is ages. <laughs> I might have to tweak it a little bit more. We'll see how it goes. <gasps> Crusher, you stop that right now. You little dick. I mean, I'm shit with vegan. I mean, I love you, animal. You're free to go wherever you want, except not there. Oh, there you go. We got another seed maker. So we need three more of those, and then I guess we'll swap this tree over to... I mean, anything else? It'd be nice to have some in storage ready for when we get new colonists. But also, I don't want to die immediately. <laughs> call me, call me radical. Ah, oh, shit. Speaking of which. Okay, Jimmy, Pierre, Gertrude, you're up, my friends. It's the nudist pack, so I can't imagine they're going to be particularly well armored. Hello. I think he knows I'm talking about him or something. Okay, ready? Sick him, boys! Yeah, but like... Yeah, but like, get him, though. Pierre? Pierre? You gormless shit! Jimmy once again is in there. What the fu- like, Attack! I hate them. Are we gonna get closer? Like, get him, though. What the fuck is wrong with them? <laughs> oh, now they're on it. Hey, there you go. Just took him a little while to wake up. Nice! Look at that. Goddamn idiot people. Oh, some pemmican as well. Where the hell did it go? <gasps> there was a pissing crow behind the tree. I hate crows. <laughs> they are my mortal enemies this campaign. Holy crap. What the hell? <gasps> Milky and Petal? But she's a tree person, Milky. It'll never work. Maybe it might work. I don't, I don't really want to think about the biology behind that. Oh, I just wanted to read my quest. 
Uh, hello? It's Beagles. Beagles do famously hate vegans. Uh, Petal? Help me out here. Oh, Jimmy. Jimmy, are you good to fight again? He's so brave. I love you, Jimmy. Nasty, nasty Beagles. Get him. Oh, shit. Petal, maybe get back. Let, that, let them take the lead. Yes, go. Pierre's in there. Jimmy is in there. Gertrude. Look at this squad. Are they going to be fine? You know what? They are absolutely going to annihilate them. Wow. Outstanding work, team. Another fine day of being a vegan. <laughs> Dice is already not happy. What's up? Recreation star, ravenously hungry. Awful menu. They have been eating nothing but raw rice for the past. God knows how long now. Death is troubling. I know that death is part of me. I, don't, I hate being reminded of it. I can't help having to kill these naked people that keep trying to take us out. No dryad speaker. So we haven't set up someone as the kind of leader of our religion. Trees defaced. Again, not my fault. We, we literally can't replant these willow trees. I'm trying my hardest, but I just... I mean, again, that was another willow tree that was right in the middle of... It was like right over here. I, I can't. I can't help that. The point is, we haven't done as much damage as we could have. And I think that's what matters here. We're trying our hardest. I say that as Petal eats the heads of our enemies. I mean, it, it it's vegan, though. I mean, they they died. They tried to kill us. They happened to be killed by Garanlan. It would be more morally reprehensible not to eat them and let them go to waste, right? I think I'm actually trying to justify accidental cannibalism. <laughs> now, what's that quest that we had pop up? Keeping Boxer, Jilp Vondel, the... Whatever that number is. Hi, Stalock of the Commonwealth of Jilp is looking for a safe settlement to take care of his pet alpha beaver. This man wants to send an alpha beaver to the only colony in the world whose leader is a tree. He's trying to goad us. He's trying to he's trying to lure us into a fight. You know what? I'm not falling for it. And finally, I never thought I would see the day. Bamboo. Like lots of bamboo too. Wow, we can actually build a base. This is incredible. Get that tree out of here. Bamboo, bamboo, here we go. Oh, this is incredible. And on the plus side, Petal and Milky are lovers. So I can build them a double bedroom. I think for the timing, let's just build anything. Like any old bedroom is absolutely fine. My only concern is the base. Well, the entire map is going to be very, very, very flammable. But I mean, really, that's just business as usual in these games, right? Uh, bamboo floor? Bamboo floor? Sure. I mean, they're hideous, but it's better than nothing. You shit! Oh, I'm actually an uh, No, no, no. Go put the dryads out. Go, go, go stop that bit. Are we going to lose? Are we going to lose everything? Why did I? <laughs> Why did I even open my mouth? At least the dryads are trying to cover the trees. We've lost a lot of the, uh, the animal bushes. The thing that gives the massive amount of beauty bonus. That's a shame. Here comes the rain. Oh, it's a rainy thunderstorm. So it's a small mercy. I mean, it's a real weird one to be celebrating building a wooden shed at the end of episode one. But I almost can't believe we've <laughs> we've actually done it. The question is, how do we go about cooking food? Because for obvious reasons, campfires aren't really going to work too long in the long term. But we're also terrible at mining, and machinery breaks down quite frequently. Ah. This is where a sensible person would have planted some berries. That probably, probably wouldn't have hurt. I mean, it's not we don't build too many machines, right? So we're not just spending all day maintaining and then pruning the trees. I think we'll be all right. I, th I think we'll be fine. Marriage is on. It's been five minutes. <laughs> Mad crows. Yeah, yeah, you don't fucking say. Careful, it's slowly walking towards us. What are they going for? <gasps> Petal. Petal, run. Come on, little dryads. Oh, we've actually got chloro dryads now. Okay, they should make quick work of them. Get them, little dryads. Or, you know, like, don't. <laughs> Sorry, that chloro's got it. The chloro's got it under control. We're fine. Oh, there you go. Hey, it's incredible. It's, it's exactly as I imagined. Now picture that same thing, but instead of crows, it's cataphracts, and instead of two dryads, it's, I don't know, like 50. Now all we need is the tiniest bit of steel, and we can actually cook a meal. What a video game, huh? The problem is it's minus two, and all of our people are naked. Now we have ourselves a base against all odds. We have a pretty acceptable amount of food to last us through the winter, and we have a lovely little dryad grove filled with everything we're going to need to defend the base, at least for a little while. Now I need you all to brace yourselves. Because it, it had to happen in a series based on nature. I hope you're all prepared and sitting comfortably. Because it's time for bees. <laughs> and unlike every other time we've had the bees, these bees we're starting with. The scenario has the research set up by default. And I mean, how can I not? It's a series all about being in harmony with nature. Our mining powers are diminished and we don't have any other infinite resource. Well, there are no quarries, no deep mines in this. It's all down to bees. And we've never really used the bees... To keep our economy going. We've used them for trivial things like, you know, making a boatload of drugs. 
<laughs> and don't get me wrong, we are going to need that this series as well. In fact, what the hell am I doing? Why haven't I planted any drugs? Finally, we don't have to eat raw food off of the floor. The hell do you mean need warm clothes? I know they need warm clothes. They just won't wear bloody warm clothes. There you go. And finally, little Milky. All right, there we go. That gives us potentially 15 little dryads to fight with. Ooh, 1.4 hours a day for Milky. I suppose that's okay. It's not like we've got much else to do right now. It's time, Petal. Bring on the bees. Oh, hey. That's pretty nice. Now, we need the centrifuge to be able to start proper work on the bees. We need to extract beeswax from the combs to be able to build the brew chambers, the hybridization chambers, the less crossbreed, all those <laughs> extra bees. You've got to remember, this is a playthrough about green playstyle. Healthy living, respect for the trees. So how do we power the bee workstation? <laughs> <laughs> With a bike. I'm going to make someone pedal for bees. This is the silliest idea I've ever had in the whole of RimWorld, and I love it. And I think that'll probably do for seed makers. That's three seed makers, so they can make another pod. Let's flip this one over to Chloras as well, because I think with this early game, they'll be more than good enough. Wait, do we need to wait for those guys to... Oh, there you go. Merging into seed maker pod. Yes, go, Milky. Pedal for bees. No, don't stop pedaling. This is the weirdest shit. <laughs> Oh my god, Milky's already gonna break. You've only been pedaling for like five minutes. Wait, winter has begun? What are you telling me it's gonna get colder? Oh, minus 13 to 27 degrees. Of all the places to choose to live for people who aren't gonna wear clothes, that was probably not the smartest choice. What the hell do you want? Noriko Keith? You want 77 silver? Yeah, I want 77 silver. What the hell am I supposed to get that from? I think we're gonna throw down another campfire because it's already getting... <laughs> Already getting dangerously cold. How long's that gonna last? Oh, yeah, no, that closes it up. I think the dryads transform before they can make the final seed pod. I'm not really that bothered. Wow, what an army though, huh? We get plenty of other seed pods spawning in out there in the world. Apparently, one spawned in anyway. Is that it? What the hell is that? Oh, it's an owl. Owl? Oh, a pretty shitty owl by the sounds of it. Petal, more like pedal. <laughs> Boomrat self down. Of course. Fine, why not? Burn down the forest just that little bit faster. Boomrat one, just casually hanging around in our bamboo house. I'm going to rename you to terrifying. Nope. A terrif. Nope. Terrifying John. There we are. You all thought Petal was in charge of this colony. No, no, no. You don't want to make John angry. <laughs> the entire base, everything leveled. Hey, stay away from that bonfire. Yeah, you go outside. Uh, Milky? <laughs> what are you doing there, pal? Classic Milky Truckles. I mean, he is eccentric. I, I, I'll allow it. I guess the final thing I really want to do today is throw down a research bench so that we can get to work on that at some point. Well, that's where the first half soil is, right? Oh, yak! Hello. The yaks are bigger than regular yaks and have very expensive insulating and beautiful wool. Relevant for us, of course. Though they give milk much less frequently. Okay. They're both male anyway, so I will admit that isn't the biggest concern. <laughs> And I really should have predicted that our biggest challenge in this playthrough isn't surviving the hostile environments or trying to fight off the Empire using only little tree people, but is instead trying to build absolutely anything at all. I land this. Everybody is welcome to join us, as long as you believe in what we believe, of course, which they do. So problem solved. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Ah, you have turned up wearing clothes. Oh, clothes with ears. We're already off to a terrible start. Well, you know what? You might as well join us now you're here. You're any good? Uh, yeah, kind of, I suppose. I mean, in a colony all about defending ourselves with animals, uh, an animal expert is pretty nice. I've got to build another bedroom. Oh, God. <laughs> but weirdly enough, as much of a pain in the ass it is to do anything with regards to building, I quite like it. It's a, it's a weird challenge. I think this is worked out pretty well. It's a weird change of pace not to just simply... Plan out this giant base and get it all built within a couple of episodes. You've got to be a bit more slower, methodical. And the challenge is coming from the game itself, not a convoluted and messy mod pack. That's quite nice. Things are actually running. That's that's a good change. 2022, new year, new me. We're going to put a hard limit on 300, maybe 400 mods, maybe 500. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I'm excited to see where this will take us. And I'm excited really to see 
the Karanlan army. I mean, we've been here for five minutes and it's already it's already getting out of hand. Just a thousand little dryads ripping apart cataphracts, peeling them like a tin opener. I'm excited to see what sort of mess this is going to end up being. I'm excited to get the base established and get really deep into the research because we have barely even scratch the surface here and i'm excited to get onto the diplomacy side of things it'll be a real nice change of pace not just blowing everybody up from orbit and as i mentioned before if you would like to play along if you would like to build your own little hippie commune or dryad army all of that is going to be available down in the description don't forget to like and favor all those mods that make the game really what it is and we'll be back tomorrow covid permitting with all of those adventures i need to lie down because i, I am still ill <laughs> ill but very happy that we have our little dryads here thank you all for watching thank you of course as always to the patrons patrons i do have a patreon kind of 2022 video going up whenever i can get five minutes to record that I've, I've written kind of an outline of it i just got a few talking points there and stuff i want to discuss things that are that are potentially changed with the main channel um but things i'm going to change especially on the patreon side of things so that'll be coming very soon over the next coming week or so but in the meantime of course a thank you to nikki sticks mercury king snitch gaming knickknack has crack for elders baldor hammer viva la fight me hacker m sabat naughty pickers Galupo Fruit Hag, Juiceda, Taco Cat, and c -Mac for our executive producers of the day. Thank you all for your support over on Patreon. And a thank you as well to Slinger, Ractanian, William, GV, Monk, Wide, Riot, Sync9, Nero Gupin, Septinless, Miscreant, Proper Banter, Ben Ice Cream, Oz, Wizard of, Sam, The Central Sapphist, Night Bee, Irish Batman, and of course, you are home for watching, unless you were one of those people, at which point, I guess double thank you. See you tomorrow.